How's it going guys and welcome back to Trailmakers Creations. This is a special episode of Trailmakers Creations. This we are horsing around. That's right, I finally designed a rotary foot method, which is is bizarre. Uh, I saw an actual clip of a small robot. It was a experimental propulsion method for a drone on the ground. And uh, and it looked kind of cool, so I thought I could recreate it in Trailmakers. And when I tried it, it actually worked. Believe that. So, what I did with it is what I noticed is that when the wheels are rotating, as you can see, they're horizontal rotation with double legs. So, we've got an eight legged horse here. This is our first build eight legged horse. So, it doesn't look like a horse. Well, it kind of looks like a horse right now, but in this position. All we need to do is hit number one. And it starts running. Now, that's fully autonomous. That's the whole running animation. As you can see, he likes to uh, play in the water as well. So we can actually jump out and see Mr. Eight-Legged Horse trucking through the water. They like to have fun. So the rotary method for the feet actually works really well, and it's based on those sensors. There's no actual timing, and it is just a servo and the pistons on his feet. So when it rotates out, that's when the pistons come down, and the pistons on the inside actually pull up because they're connected to those servos or those uh, sensors rotating around his legs there. So it's just a matter of positioning the blocks so that the pistons get pulled up and dropped down at the right timing. So these are fire mares, as you can tell by the tail and the mane, made of a fire. Come on, buddy. You come back? All right. So we can stop and he either ends up in this position or this position. Or this position where he thinks he's all that. See, he thinks it's pretty cool. So we can see here those sensors on his legs when they rotate. Those are what's pulling up or sticking out the pistons on the individual legs. Of course, there's some suspension on there and suspension for the feet because uh, I find those are the pieces that get the best traction on the ground. And it keeps your parts from breaking off his legs when they hit the ground. So I built this first. Actually, his legs were a lot shorter because I didn't know if it would balance properly or not. And I also put them on a slight angle inwards so that it tends to balance itself on those feet as it's rotating instead of having them out to the side. You probably could have them stretched out to the side like that as well and uh, just have them rotating in the opposite direction and that would probably work too. I'm probably going to end up trying that to make some kind of big caterpillar or centipede kind of thing with multiple, multiple legs using this rotary technique. Uh, because it doesn't require any kind of special timing or anything with multiple parts, right? So you got a servo and pistons all acting together at the same time. Trying to get the timing on that to work properly is tough. So if you use sensors, it just automatically does it at the right time. Now there are a couple of thrusters on here on the body that we can use to speed them up a wee bit. I usually, oh, oh, and then he likes to fall over and have a little nap time. There is a couple of helicopter engines in there as far as stabilizers. Again, just force stabilizers, not connected to any kind of angle sensor or anything like that. So then I was thinking, okay, well, I got one horse. I got a normal horse. Like, like what about, okay, so whenever he would end up in the water, I would get kicked out of the seat. So I was, hey, man, well, why don't we make an aquatic horse? How about an aquatic horse? A horse that can run underwater. That would be kind of cool, right? So let's take a look at that one. So this is our eight-legged aquatic horse. As you can see, slightly different style. He's got uh, little chrome shiny feet. He also got that funky uh, scale texture on there as well. Plus he's got the underwater engines on there so that he can motor underwater. It is using the same legs, but of course we have an underwater seat. And as he starts running, of course we have a couple of uh, small thrusters and our body thrusters on there as well that's to help him get out of the water once he's trying to come out of the water but we can see that he likes to run under the water here and his underwater propellers will automatically engage when he's underwater so he runs along the bottom quite well and again even that head movement is connected to those sensors on the feet so that when his feet are moving he actually has the right timing so that everything all works together trying to set that up with numbers as far as the timing goes on the actual sensors or using logic gates 
can be quite tedious and uh, sometimes it's hard to get them to, to work properly, especially when they're different pieces, like a servo compared to a hinge, right? The timing isn't the same, so it's difficult to set things up by timing. So by using sensors, we just eliminate all those problems and everything works together at the same time because the sensor is triggered at the same time. Oh, this doesn't look good. Drum makers crash, man. So that is the aquatic horse, and that one was designed for in the water. So basically a horse sub. Like, hey man, there's a horse running across the bottom of the ocean. It definitely looks like a horse galloping, right? Alright, so then I thought an aquatic horse, so an underwater horse, that's pretty cool. But like, I wonder how fast I could make a horse. Like, could I make like a race horse? So then I made a couple of more slight modifications and I came up with this guy. As you can see, he's slipping and sliding around. So this is the eight-legged racehorse. So he uses a bit of a servo in there for steering because he needs to turn, be able to turn a little quicker. Now he does have the same walking action except it's much quicker and he doesn't have any traction on the ground. So we rely on his thrusters. He's got three, he's got one in the butt, two on his sides for getting him around. So we hit number one again. This time we got the super spinny. But we got a racehorse. Woo! So you can steer him around if you're gentle. But you don't want to get him uh, too wild. He's a wild stallion. He wants to run wild and free. Sometimes he just lays over on his side and plays dead. So there's not too much different between this one except for the, oh, the aesthetics. And the fact that this is not aquatic. This has got no aquatic seat, man. So yeah, he's got a couple of wings on the front there and some vertical stabilizers just to help keep him in line. Oh, see, or else he does that. And yeah, oh, 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 horse catastrophe. Probably got a headache from all that head shaking. That's what happens when you connect it to the servos, or to the sensors, I should say. Oh, oh, jeez. Come on, man, pull out of it, pull out of it. So it's, this is really fun in the, uh, works really well in the test zone where it's nice and flat, obviously. You don't have to deal with any bumps or anything like that. But he works pretty good. He can run up to almost 100 kilometers an hour. So that's pretty quick for an eight-legged eight -legged horse, I guess. As you can see, you can use your bit of servo steering. Get yourself through gaps like this, but that's the trick, is to keep yourself upright. Because you don't want any of the sides of the wheels to get caught on anything or else you're Gandhi. There we go, run across the bridge. Run, 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 be free. Oh, oh, pull back, pull back. There you go. <laughs> so that is the eight-legged racehorse. That'll be up on the shop as well. And there's also, you can need to see the two sets of suspension. So you can see there's one set of suspension here and one set here, so the back legs and the front section can move separately from the weighted middle section. So I think that, that helps with the stabilization when the front and the back legs, and you'll also notice that the front and the back legs are offset. The front legs are facing forward, the back legs are sideways. That's so we can get an alternating foot pattern on the ground seems to work really well for keeping it stable and it also gives it that horse galloping kind of look oh can we go through the tunnel can we horse around in the tunnel come on come on oh 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 i think we busted a foot did we no we're broken but i don't know what oh, oh gee face plant there we go oh okay just lay down and die buddy nice try good effort all right, let's take a look at our last horse. All right, so you could probably tell by the thumbnail what our final horse is. So I figured of all the horses that are the famous horses that do all the runses and jumpses, the most famous ones probably got to be the Pegasus, right? Got to have a winged horse. So taking this and trying to make it fly, this horse was uh, just thinking about it made my head hurt. Totally imbalanced, rotating parts all over the place, pistons moving, not going to be easy. But, we got gimbals. Gimbal magic. So, a couple of well-placed gimbals. 
uh, on the same button as the, and these wings actually fold out like this. Ta-da! So, I have gimbals set on the same button, and see they even fold back up. And I can do that while I'm, well, I'm going to attempt to do that while I'm running and take off and then land again while I'm still running, taking no damage. Presence. So this one's basically the same design as the other horses, except it's got a couple of gimbals and those set of wings that come up on, you can see they come up there on some pistons, and then they fold out. And it does have a couple of gimbals on there just to offset the weight so that my angles here for my wingses actually have enough angle to give us lift when we are running with our thrusters. So, fold them wings up. And now let's run off the cliff. Then we go to run off the cliff. Be like, we're running out of road, man. Where we're going, we don't need roads. We fold out the wings, we pull back a bit, and we fly. Da, 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 da. There you go, E.T. Eat your heart out. So we have some steering as well because we have a helicopter engine in there for steering. I wasn't going to attempt to uh, to make this thing any more complicated than it already needs to be. And then we can come down like this, come down near the ground, and tuck our wings in, and keep right on running, damage free. Look at that, eh? Come on, boy. Come on, boy. So yeah, that was really fun when that actually worked. And I discovered this rotary wheel system for these legs. It made this all of a sudden very much possible. So those are the four horses that I built. Now, I guess the next thing would be each one of these horses. i got to check the complexity. I'm not sure. I believe they're around 400. So not even possible. I was thinking, hey, I could actually have a set of team of horses pulling a wagon or something now. It's like, yeah, no, 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 not unless you're using the complexity mod. That is not happening. Because this is too complex, man. The horse is too complex, dude. Okay, why are you flying sideways, Holmes? Alright, we can do that. Let's do this. Ha! Ah, look at that, eh? No problemo. So that is the Pegasus, the eight-legged flying horse. So all these horses will be uploaded. The eight-legged flying horse the aquatic horse, the eight-legged horse by itself, and the eight-legged race horse. I will upload all of those. You'll probably all see them uploaded at the same time. Uh, really simple controls on them as well. So if you're interested in checking these out or maybe uh, dissecting it, backwards engineering it, and seeing how these uh, leg systems work, so you can build some yourself. Alrighty, guys. That's all I got for you in this video. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Let me know down in the comments below which was your favorite one. And... We will see you in the next one. Ciao. Let's go flying, buddy.